Zinc is necessary for the activity of over 300 enzymes that aid in metabolism, digestion, nerve function, and many other processes. And only a small amount of zinc is necessary to reap all these benefits. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the best way to take zinc, what it's used for and what the research suggests, and five key takeaways that you need to keep in mind so that you can use your zinc correctly and safely. So stay tuned till the end. Hi guys, you've seen Arsenal Media Pharmacy on YouTube. This week's video is on zinc. If you haven't already, smash the like button below now as I greatly appreciate it and it helps out the channel so much. Also, while you're at it, hit that subscribe button too to stay up to date with new weekly videos. And without further ado, let's talk about zinc. Zinc is available in several forms. Zinc sulfate is the least expensive form, but it's also the least easily absorbed. More easily absorbed forms of zinc are zinc picolinate, zinc citrate, zinc acetate, zinc glycerate, and zinc monomethionine. But if you take zinc sulfate currently and it causes stuff irritation, you could try another form such as zinc citrate. You also have topical zinc oxide cream ointments or pastes that are applied to the skin to prevent conditions such as diaper rash and sunburn. Zinc is vital for a healthy immune system, correctly synthesizing DNA, promoting healthy growth during childhood, and healing wounds. So why is it not talked about so much? That's because many animal and plant foods are naturally rich in zinc, making it easy for most people to get the right amount of it. What is the right amount, you might ask? This table here breaks it down for you. The US Department of Agriculture's Food Data Central lists the nutrient content of many foods and provides a comprehensive list of those foods that contain zinc. I left the link down below so you could discover which foods carry the most amount of zinc. I think oysters may have been the richest source. So it may stand out that it's uncommon for you to actually have a zinc deficiency especially while living in a developed world, but certain factors can contribute to zinc deficiency and you should be aware of them. People with GI disease, alcoholics, vegetarians, and people with sickle cell disease may be at more risk for developing a deficiency. Also, pregnancy can lead to an increased demand of zinc, so talk to your doctor if you feel that this is a concern. It's also best to let them know if zinc is right for you as there's a ton of interactions you should be aware of too, such as interactions with antibiotics, medicines used for rheumatoid arthritis, and thiazide diuretics used for blood pressure, as well as well as other blood pressure medicines. Now enough background, let's get into the five main takeaways. Number one, how should I take zinc for the most benefits? You should take zinc with a full glass of water or juice. If zinc causes an upset stomach, then it's best to take it with meals, preferably a meal with protein, but don't take zinc at the same time as iron or calcium supplements as the absorption of each of them can be affected. Number two, zinc interacts with copper. A strong relationship exists between zinc and copper. Too much of one can cause a deficiency in the other. If you take zinc, including zinc in a multivitamin, you should also take copper. Zinc reduces the amount of copper your body absorbs, and high doses of zinc can cause a copper deficiency, which is why some doctors recommend to take two milligrams of copper along with a zinc supplement. Just something to keep in mind. Number three, avoid intranasal zinc. This is the kind where you'd have to spray it into your nose. Unfortunately, there has been a link with permanent loss of your sense of smell when taking it this form. So stay away from them from now. Number four, zinc may or may not help with colds. Zinc is used for a number of different reasons and up to 40 milligrams of zinc a day is considered safe for adults. You may have heard of zinc being used in hospitals as treatment for burns, certain ulcers, and other skin injuries. Age-related macular degeneration is another big one, which is why you'll see in the popular AREDS2 formulas and so much more for supporting your vision. The studies are conflicting. Some support its use and others say more research is needed. But as far as colds, a recent analysis of several studies showed that zinc lozenges or syrup reduce the length of a cold by one day, especially when taken within the 20, first 24 hours of the first signs and symptoms. But other studies did not show this to actually take effect. Keep in mind that if you do want to try it out for the cold, they need to be in the lozenge or syrup form as these forms help to stay in the throat and come in contact with the rhinovirus that causes colds. More studies are needed to determine the best dose and form of zinc as well as how long it should be taken before zinc can be medically recommended as a treatment for the common cold. And lastly, number five. The issue of phytates and caffeine. These have been observed to slow down or block the absorption of zinc in the body, but you may still be fine as you'll probably still get enough of the zinc you need during the day, even while, let's say, eating your cereals that contain phytic acid and your daily dose of caffeine from your teas and coffees. But if you feel that you may be deficient, please use caution around phytic acids and caffeine. And if you want to play it safe, zinc bisglycinate is a well-tolerated and well-absorbed zinc chelate which is comprised of one zinc molecule bound to two molecules of these amino 
amino acids called glycine. Because this form of zinc is absorbed intact, it doesn't compete with other minerals for absorption in the intestinal tract. So you could take it with phytic acids that are found in cereals, grains, corn, and rice. I hope this breakdown was useful to you guys. Now you're a zinc supplement pro, and I hope that you did enjoy this video and learned something new. Like the video if you did enjoy it, and subscribe to stay on board with all my other weekly health and wellness videos. Thanks for sticking tuned all the way to the end, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.